Two or three months ago, I did a video about our heat pump that's outside right now in the driving rain, which is why I'm inside. And it was essentially how much did it cost us over a full calendar year in terms of actual pounds from our data, from our usage. What I learned from that in terms of looking in the comment section and tweets and DMs, messages, social media stuff, is that a lot of people wanted more data. They wanted a deeper dive into what the heat pump outside and stuff like this uni tower where the hot water and various other things is stored. What did they use? How much did we use for the hot water and the heating, for example? What did the coldest day of the year use? What was it like for each month? Things like that. So that's what this is. It's an extension of that video. So if that video wasn't your thing, then you really won't like this one. But if you are doing what I think a lot of people should do a lot more of, research, research, research into a heat pump, then hopefully this will help you out. But remember, every house is different. Every usage pattern is different. And ultimately, and this is the biggest one of all I say in every single video, if you don't get it installed correctly, if you don't get heat loss calculations done for your property, then it probably won't work. Or it probably, if it does work, will cost you more than it should. That's the key. So on that assumption, you've got a good installer, a heat geek, if you will, then this will give you a bit more of an idea of what you might use. But remember, it is for our house, so it's just a pointer rather than what you will use. Right, before I go into the stats itself, bit of background info, the house, as I've said in previous videos, and if you want to know more about the financials of that, go into the, the description below. The links are all there for the previous video and the other ones that we've done from before we installed it to now. Uh, so all the data that you're probably going to ask has already been done. But I'll give you, again, a bit of background info. This house is exactly the same in terms of insulation before and after the heat pump. We haven't changed anything, although it was built around 2007, 6, 7. Uh, so it's relatively modern and well insulated, which is the first thing I would do with any house, with any heating system. Sort the insulation out first, which is often a lot cheaper than people think it is. So get actual quotes if you're unsure. But even if you're keeping your gas boiler, having a leaky house, a, a badly insulated one, is just throwing money away. It's like having the heating on with the window open. All the piping's the same, we didn't change anything like that, we don't have underfloor heating, and only four or five of the radiators were replaced from single panel to double panel, so they were just a straight swap. So that's it, essentially it's exactly the same as it was from when we had the gas boiler barring those radiators. And as before, I'm not saying that heat pump works for anybody, because it clearly doesn't. If it works for you, brilliant. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. It doesn't mean it's evil, it doesn't mean it's a conspiracy against something, it just means it doesn't work for you. There isn't a one-size-fits-all solution, so therefore, let's just, well, you know, let's just get on with the details, shall we now? Right, as you can see here, this is December 2022. You can see just below where it says select range, there's the heating symbol and the hot water symbol, so that this is both the hot water and the heating, it's not separated at this time. So in December, again, one of the coldest we had for years. So this isn't average, this is maybe not worst case scenario, but it's a bad winter. 690 kilowatt hours we used in December. In January, we used 586 kilowatt hours. February, 423. March, 501. Then we used 263 in April. May, 163. Uh, June, 62. July, 70. Uh, 62 in August, September, 80 kilowatt hours, uh, October, 220, you can clearly see the seasons here, November, 400 kilowatt hours, so that's November that's just gone, 2023. Right, now let's go back to 2022 December, when we use 690, and what I'll do, I'll go to the coldest day of that particular month, and the one we've had, well, again, for years. So this is the coldest day on my record anyway. And again, this was minus 15 at night, minus 10 during the day. For the UK, that is very, very cold. So I can't stress that it's enough. Some people saw this in previous videos and went, 30 odd kilowatt hours a day? That'll cost me a fortune. No, no, this is when it's immensely, immensely cold, which probably only happens every one, four, five, six, seven years, something like that. So again, worst case scenario-ish. So over the 24 hours, we've got 1.1, 1 .1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1
2.5, 2.5. So that, that's a, a typical amount of electricity we're using per hour here. Uh, 2, 2, 2. 1.5, 1.5. Now the reason why it's using more during the night isn't just because it's colder at night, of course. It's because we've got a time of day tariff. So for us, it's cheaper at night considerably. It's about a third of the cost. I've told the house to heat up to a higher temperature, at least downstairs, because the electricity is so cheap. I might as well just get more heat into the house. And that's why we're using more during the nights, not just because of the outside temperatures. If you've got exact data for how much gas you used on the 15th of December 2022, then ideally in Yorkshire as well, that might give you a fair idea of how much it's cost you last year compared to what this might have cost you given the same sort of considerations. For the week 12th to 18th of December, 35, 32, 35, 38, that's the big one, 33, 28 and 33. So if I go forward to when the temperature dropped to a more reasonable level, we've got 20, 18, 16, 16, 15, 12 and a half, 14 and a half. And that's essentially what I think a normal winter would be. So let's now jump to last month, November, which was actually quite cold for us anyway, for a November. So 6th of November to 12th of November. We used 87 kilowatt hours during that week. Uh, 13, 9, 12, 12, 13, 14. So I would say that is a typical cold snap. That was probably about between zero degrees and minus four for the for that week. Again, similar the week after that. And once we get to the 20th of November, 26th, just because it's a recent week, uh, you can see where the temperature really did drop. We went up to 21. I think that was when it hit about minus seven. Hot water now. So you can see, again, below select range, it's just got the hot water symbol, the little tap. So this is just for the hot water, ex everything excluding heating, essentially. So we used 854 kilowatt hours during the calendar year. So we've obviously got uh, a good portion of December still to go. Uh, it's fairly steady. Obviously, you will use less in summer, probably because you have, I don't know, showers instead of baths, things like that. But essentially, it's fairly static. So January, we used 107. 90 in February, March 106. We did have people over quite a bit during those few months, so that will explain a little bit. Um, April 75, 73, 47, I think we're on holiday for part of that. Uh, 59, 54, 54, 72, and last month in November, 86 kilowatt hours for all our hot water needs. And I feel I should point at this stage because this comes up in the comments as well. This is everything the heat pump uses, including when it defrosts or de-ices itself. There is no immersion heater outside or anything like that. It just kind of reverses the flow, I think. Or it does something clever, which defrosts itself outside. So this is everything it's used, not just for the hot water and the heating minus anything. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not leaving anything out, essentially. So let me go into a, a typical day for the hot water. Again, because we are on that time of day tariff, we've got a cheap nighttime period, and the hot water tank that's inside here is enough for us, then we used all our electricity for the hot water at that cheap nighttime period. I put it hotter because it's so cheap at night to run than we need it, which means we get more out of it. It lasts longer. So during that, well, between 4 and 5 a.m., we used 1.3 and between three and 4.75. So it starts roughly about half past three and can run until half past five if necessary. Again, that's within the cheap window and that does us. But occasionally, certainly if we've got people staying over, I have to boost it, so to speak. It has to refill itself or I tell it to. Certainly if I want a nice hot bath. So let me find another day where I've done that. There we go. So you can see here between three and four, it's done its usual thing. 1.3 so it's used about two kilowatt hours for hot water during November when it was well pretty cold and then just to give it a little bit of a boost because of well again maybe I want a bath or whatever we did on the 11th use 0.37 there and 0.62 so another one kilowatt hour so that's all the hot water in total that we used for that day and that's a pretty much typical pattern for us if anyone from Valent is watching this, can you please give us the ability to have different hot water temperatures for different times of the day? At the moment, everything has to be set with one hot water temperature. I want it a lot hotter during the cheap window than I put or need during the day because it's so cheap, I might as well take advantage of it and then need less for the peak period. Now, in terms of overall efficiency that the system thinks we've got for heating and hot water, it's saying 3.2. Eight, a cop of 3.8, so that's 
380% efficient, if you will. For every kilowatt hour of energy we've used, electricity, we've got 3.8 kilowatt hours of heat back out of it. If I look at just the hot water, that's running at 3.0 over the calendar year 2023. And if I just look at the heating, 4.1. So again, that's really efficient. But I suppose I should point this out as well. This is the first full year we've had the heat pump outside. I'm tweaking this. I'm fiddling with it. That has knocked the efficiency for the last year. Not so much in the last few months, but effectively, I think I can get more out of it. So I'm hoping to beat this next year in terms of efficiency figures. So this is just heating over the year. 479 for heating, 333, 395, 188, 90. You can see there's obviously some maintenance stuff going on over those months. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what it does, but it does some things. September, 26 kilowatt hours. October of this year, 148 kilowatt hours for all our heating needs. November, quite chilly for us, 314. In December, we used 586 kilowatt hours just for heating. So again, let's go back to the full year of what we used. 3000 kilowatt hours during the 2023 calendar year bulk of which obviously is during the colder winter months. Hot water is fairly even throughout the year. And well, yeah, it is what it is. Now I've gone through the financial stuff in the previous video. So if you want to know a lot more in terms of coinage, go and watch that one. But very briefly, this house um, for the heat pump, it costs us about four and a half thousand pounds more than it would have done for a new gas boiler. So we had a failing gas boiler and we needed something new. Clearly we chose the heat pump, but with all the other stuff we've got in the house, it did make sense. So we're looking at about four and a half thousand pounds more than the new gas boiler would have cost us, post grant of course, and we're saving roughly six to 700 pounds a year. That will go up a little bit once we finally get rid of gas completely, we've got a gas hob still, because then that's another hundred pounds a year standing charge we won't need to pay. So six to 700, call it 650 quid a year saving for a four and a half thousand pound extra fee, so to speak, in terms of the installation. I'm happy with that. But as I said in the previous video, it's chiefly because of the, well, this behind me, the Give Energy Home Battery System and the solar panels, although they don't do that much in winter for us, we haven't got a great array. Uh, and the time of day tariff, of course. If we didn't have the home battery in the solar system, then it, I figured out it's about the same. It'd have cost us the same to run the heat pump as it would do the gas boiler, but it would cost us four and a half grand more to install. Now. Before you mention anything, the batteries and the solar do a lot more than just that. I haven't got these just for the heat pump. They save me a lot of money elsewhere on top of this. But ultimately, yes, for us, it made sense. Again, it might not for you. That's what this video is trying to achieve. Does it make sense? Part of your research, only you can answer that one. Oh, and one other detail, the maintenance of it. It cost us £180 for its first year's service. Didn't really need anything, although a few other little tweaks were done. And from the same person, I think it was about 130 for a gas boiler equivalent of what we got done. So it is more expensive to service them, but we're not talking major differences here. If there is any questions you've got regarding anything I may not have shown you, then please do ask in the comments. The app does seem surprisingly accurate for electricity consumption. I've checked on the Give Energy stuff and it does seem to marry up. Um, so I'm happy with that in terms of using that as a data point. Oh, and for anybody wondering if they do work in winter, then I've done a video for you as well, where I clearly show you it works, as has most of Scandinavia again for many years and decades. I always find heat pumps a weird one. They've been around for decades in much colder countries. It's basically a fridge freezer. If you think your fridge freezer is really good, it works. It takes heat out of the fridge or freezer and dumps it outside. It's the same thing. The same technology, this is not new. It's just new-ish to the UK. It's getting better, don't get me wrong. The newer stuff is far quieter than the older stuff. It's more efficient and it can go to higher temperatures, but effectively it is, well, it's just a heating system. That's all it needs to be, it just works. We set our house temperature to 20.5 degrees and just leave it at that. Slightly lower at night, I think it's about 18. Um, obviously we turn it off in summer, so there's a bit of that. Well, effectively we use it in the exact same way we did the gas boiler. Set the temperature on the thermostat and leave it to it. Okay, I think I am done now, so thank you ever so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, just 
click something, type a comment, subscribe. That The reason why all YouTube channels say that is because it does genuinely help the video get pushed on the old YouTube algorithm. If you want to support the channel even more, that's what the membership is for, 99p a month, cancel any time. You get the videos on Sunday instead of Friday. And don't forget about the second behind the scenes sort of fun sort of channel. That's driving home. That's where the podcast sits. That's where we do all the kind of just, again, behind the scenes sort of stuff. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.